Hello guys, welcome back to your daily TikTok doses. It's your girl TikTok Liz, and on today's episode, we have amazing, amazing content for you, perfectly splendid. Alright, this is part two of me getting ready deaf, and I'm actually going to be talking a little bit about my childhood. So, growing up deaf, there was no other deaf kids in my little hick-ass town. There was one other hard-of-hearing girl, and she had hearing aids that she could choose to wear if she wanted to, but she could get by without them. And we became, like, best friends. Now here's my thing. We had nothing in common, nothing at all, except for the fact that we were deaf. Another reason we clung to each other so much is because, honestly, not a lot of the kids wanted to take a chance on us. So luckily, I had her and she had me, but then I moved. My parents ended up getting divorced, so I moved to a different school with only one other deaf kid, and he was a guy on the football team. So do you think he liked me? No. Do you think any of his friends were nice to me or he was nice to me or anybody at that school? No. It's really weird, but when you're kids, kids act like everything is contagious. So if they talk to a deaf kid, they're going to be deaf or they're not going to be cool anymore. Or if they talk to the kid in the wheelchair, they're not going to be cool anymore, etc. You know what I mean? So for me growing up, I genuinely just had to kind of pick and toss friends as they chose me. I've always been the friend that walks behind the two. I've always been the friend that was left out of the group chats that they made. And in school, I could never understand anybody. So jokes, I would constantly just fake laugh and never know what the fuck they were saying. Or even in like the cafeteria, oh my God. That's where everybody wants to gossip and you can't be included because you can't hear. I was on the volleyball team to try and make more friends and I liked playing volleyball, but here's the thing. The coach played extreme favorites, so none of the girls liked me because I didn't get to play. So up comes my August birthday and I decide to have a pool party. Smart. And who do I invite because I have no friends? The volleyball team. And you know what they did? They ignored me the whole time. They played off in a group by themselves. My sister was the only one hanging out with me at my own birthday party. And then, at the end of the night, one of the girls took a photo that we took where my sister and I were on the very ends, cropped my sister and I off, posted it, and said, had a great time today. How fucked up. So just a little word of advice. If you see any kid kind of out there struggling and alone or anything, just use kindness. And I have plenty more stories where that came from, so let me know if you want to hear more. I love you guys. So I grew up in a family of models. I have three siblings and I'm the oldest, which is always a shock to people because I'm the shortest. The first one to model was my sister who's a year younger than me. She started at like 14, 15, I was 16. I was heavier when I was 16. I was vegetarian for like a year and only ate butter pasta. I stopped being vegetarian. I went to McDonald's every day for lunch with my toxic, abusive ex-boyfriend. And around my junior year, we would go out to California all the time to visit her, spend summers, there and I was just surrounded by all these beautiful thin people and the summer before my senior year it became my mission to be skinny I basically starved myself and I did it like I accomplished my goal in a really unhealthy way I look back on those photos of myself and I look happy and I'm super thin but honestly I was so miserable the pressure I put on myself to stay thin was ridiculous and it's no one's fault but my own like no one was putting that pressure on me but myself when i started traveling with my sister after high school i was her chaperone while she was modeling things got a little worse but that story is for another video and i have so many stories about the toxic modeling industry from my point of view like it's crazy story time about how i slept with my teacher and got pregnant a little background information i was 18 and in 12th grade i had always had trouble in school especially history class and I had always had tutors and everything like that. And eventually I just got tired of trying to get my grade up because I realized that it was never going to happen. So my teacher was 27 years old. We're going to call him Mike. And Mike had a girlfriend. He had been staying after school helping me like every single day. From like 3 o'clock till 5 o'clock. Well, the one day I had this outfit on, that maybe wasn't that appropriate. And I was being super flirty with him the whole time. To be honest, I just didn't want to put in the effort to get up my grades. And then 10 minutes later, he started getting handsy. And I told him that if he wanted to do anything, he had to get my grade up for me. So he did just that. Well, for the next couple of months, I would go over to his house. 
to study. Like for part. So today I'm gonna tell y'all about my worst and my best date. So my first date wasn't like too crazy of a story, but I just I still think it's funny. So um, we were at the movies, strike one because a movie date for your first date is not a good idea. And when I first showed up, he was shorter than me, way shorter than me. And hey, I am not one for height shaming, but I'm five four. So, and I don't think I'm open-minded enough to be taller than my boyfriend. You yeah. know? So, whatever. I'm taller than him. I feel like the dominant one in the relationship already. So, um, we go sit down in the movie seats and we're just chilling and stuff, watching the movie. I forgot I forgot which one it was. But um uh he's not trying to touch me or anything, so that's good. I know the bar is low. But when we're watching the movie, this like really cute guy comes on screen. I forgot what movie it is, but I remember this. And I'm like, damn, I said it out loud. Never done that before. Don't know why it happened. He was like, what? I was like, oh, I don't know. I just brushed it off. So that was my fault. And this is what topped it off. So he was trying to like talk during the movie. I wasn't feeling it already. And he kept trying to, he was like, can I pinch your nose? what are you serious right now and he was like yeah can i pinch your nose i was like no no i'm good no he was like let me pinch your nose let me pinch your nose and i kept having to like swat his hand away i don't want to talk about this anymore next so my best date it was that i met him at junior prom he was somebody else's date he didn't go to my school and when i was leaving we made eye contact and you know we were just flirting flirting with our eyes and the next day, um, I saw that he DM'd me. I don't know how he found my Instagram, but he did. And we just hit it off and we started like talking on the phone after that. So a couple of weeks later, I let him take me out on a date and he came and knocked on the door. I'm not used to that. And um, he took me to an Indian restaurant. And I'm like, how do you know I like Indian food? And he was like, because you said it on the phone. So the food was great. The conversation was great. We were just already clicking. I felt like I knew him for a long time. So after we were done eating, he took me to a fair. And y'all, it was just so much fun. Like, I felt like we knew each other in another lifetime. The conversations were just great. So I'm running out of time. But we got snacks from the gas station, ate in the car, and talked for the rest of the night. It was great. And um, we dated for a little bit after that, but it didn't it didn't work out because right person, wrong time. So, yeah. This is a story about a girl named Lucky. Just kidding. This is the story about the first time I went on a date with a girl. The reason why I'm laughing is because I look like this at the end. Oh, okay. This is my dog licking my tears off of my face. Anyways, let me set the scene for you. This is in Toronto. I personally feel like the girls are prettier in Toronto because I'm sorry. Someone called me. I personally think the girls are prettier in Toronto just because they're more natural and everybody looks different. Everyone in LA looks the same. Everyone in LA looks like... <laughs> We're both like femme, so I don't really know who's like the... How the dynamic goes. I don't really... This is my first time ever going out with a girl. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna plan it. I'm like, hey, meet me here at this time. I made us a reservation and... Yeah, she's like perfect. Never been in that place before, but it looks good. See you soon. And I'm like, oh, jittery because it's my first time ever going on a date. I'm a girl date virgin. We meet in the restaurant in the city because we're motherfucking city girls. We meet at the restaurant. We order drinks. I want to loosen up a little bit. We have good conversation. It's going good. And the day that we went out was a Friday. So she was like, oh my god, my friend just hit me up. I, we could go to this party. You want to go to a party? I'm like, hell yeah. So I pay for the check because I don't know how this fucking dynamic works. You know, we pull up to the place. We pull up to the spot we're looking cute as fuck together i'm feeling good about myself and we meet the guy who invited her and this is the downfall of the story this is where it starts going downhill pulls me to the side and she's like oh by the way i'm so sorry this guy he's just like obsessed with me and i'm like okay queenie i get it like you're pretty i don't really care like it's we talking on the balcony having a good time this bitch robert comes I actually don't know his name. It was like robert jack jake one of those like you get the picture <laughs> and jake whatever this man's name was Kept doing that the entire night. Hey, it's shot o'clock. You guys are too pretty to not be taking shots right now. Like that guy. The guy that is going to give you a hug tech guy. And you know, at first I didn't really care. I was like, you're fine. Come on, let's go. And then after a so like five times, I was like, okay, bitch. This enough is enough. 
that's when I started drinking for revenge. And that's why I click, I'm like, this man is trying to steal my day. And that's why I started getting on space. I was like, why are you so obsessed with us? Like, why are you so obsessed? Like, I was like, leave us alone. No, in a funny way. But then she started entertaining it. This is the moment that I started drinking out of, I was going through all five stages of grief. And then he started touching her, which I was like, you with a dick disgusting me oh, and she told me she's like honestly i think i'm just gonna sleep over here and she was like we should do this again sometime and i was like what the fuck literally i wasn't confident in my sexuality and that just made me more insecure we were all talking but at the end it came to a point where like they were on a date and i was just third wheeling so i was like okay girl i'm just gonna call my uber home i get in my uber and my uber asked me he's like how was your night and i started crying crying he doesn't like speak very much english and i would just cry inside there's no music but i hope that she got a little something that night because all that i got was trauma <laughs> well 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 and that's it for me guys thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy the video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe we've got so much amazing content for you see you soon for a new episode